All right, welcome to another episode of Beyond the Footprints, guys. Today, we have got a fabulous, fabulous presentation, and we have some really great guests with us on, but I can't go without saying I've got one of my favorite guys here with me, who is my co-host, Mr. Stu Johnson. How you doing, Stu? Great. Great to have this lineup that you're about to talk about, so... Yeah, we're we we have got a great show, guys. We are so stoked um, to have all of these guys on here. As you all know, we have SquatchCon 2023 going to be coming up here in Idaho, Caldwell, Idaho, in the next three weeks. And we wanted to make sure that uh, we got everybody on here right before to kind of let you guys know what they're all excited about and what we can be looking forward to. And so, without further ado, we're going to bring them on. So we're just going to go right down the the line here. So we've got. Mr. Brian Kingsharp with Sasquatch Odyssey. How you doing? I'm good, guys. How are you? Doing well. And we got Mr. Cliff Brackman. How you doing, Cliff? I'm all right. Thanks for coming on. And we got Mr. Michael Freeman. How are you, sir? I'm doing all right. How are you? Doing well. I really appreciate you taking the time. I know you're at work, and I just want to say thank you for doing that, my friend. Sitting in the car in the parking lot. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> nice and without further ado we have got dr jeff meldrum how are you sir it's so good to see you my friend i'm great thanks very much well Welcome, um, everybody. yeah thank you again for making this happen guys this is something that we are are so excited about and i know a lot of our viewers and a lot of our um, fans are going to be really excited about to see you guys in person and then also to see you guys live online so go right into it. So SquatchCon Idaho 2023 is going to be coming up here on the 26th of August. What are you guys really excited to, uh, about it? What are you guys expecting? And, and and just kind of go from there. Cliff, let us know, my friend. Like, what are you thinking? How are you feeling about it? What are you looking forward to? And I'm looking forward to a lot of things because conferences are, are a weird thing for me. I do quite a few of them and stuff. And this isn't exactly your normal conference, but I understand. Um, I, I guess that there's not going to be presentations per se, but I guess I'm, we're going to be on a panel that's largely focused on the Freeman footage. And I do think that the Freeman footage um, has perhaps actually Paul Freeman in general, and I'm going to go bigger than that. The Blue Mountain evidence in general has not been given uh, perhaps a fair shake because I think that the rumor mill has done more to damage this set of data um, than any other set of data, it probably even more, it probably even more damaging than that to the Patterson Gimlin film, um, because there is so much here. There is so much available in the Blue Mountain data, and of course, the Freeman footage is just one small piece of that. Um, and the Freeman footage fits into the rest of it like a jigsaw puzzle piece fits into a puzzle. Um, the Freeman footage actually substantiates other evidence collected by other people in the Blue Mountains. Um, and I, I think that that is something that's overlooked because um, it's not all Paul Freeman stuff. I mean, I wish, I mean, that Paul Freeman just wasn't responsible for all of that, just a significant portion of it. Um, and the, to realize that other people were there doing similar things, casting the same individual Sask- Sasquatch's footprints over time in various places, people unrelated to the Bigfoot field, having seen that same individual's footprints goes a long ways towards that, in my opinion, authenticating the evidence. Um, and again, it's just one piece in a puzzle. Um, and you have to stand back to look at the whole, the whole puzzle as instead of one little piece puzzles don't make sense when you look at one little piece after all. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well said. And with that being said, I mean, Mike, tell us a little bit about that, right? Because he's talking about like the whole entire puzzle. You can't look at it at one piece. Tell us about that, like what they're going to be able to see, right? We're not going to go really into too much depth, but give us a little bit of like a cliffhanger, if you will, and what that's going to look like. Yeah, well, I mean, we're obviously going to take a look at the Freeman footage that my dad captured in August of 1992. And we're going to look at it in a new way that a lot of people haven't seen yet, um, unless you've had access to you know, my book, or you've seen me in person, it's uh, another, you know, presentation, you haven't seen this yet. And so there's going to be some new enhancements, some new things to look at. And it's going to be, you know, hopefully exciting for everyone. And Cliff's right, you know, it is a puzzle. And I talk about it all the time. And I talk about the Freeman footage all the time. But I don't even know everything about it. 
And so it's nice to have the other distinguished members of the panel that are going to be there with me so I can hear their opinion as well. And, and maybe I haven't heard that yet. And maybe I can get some insight or something I've overlooked or haven't noticed before. You know, so for me, it's uh, it's always exciting just to get someone else's opinion and to be able to sit down and look at that. But I think that, you know, everyone that's going to be there in person and everyone that's going to purchase this, you know, online and take advantage of that is probably going to be pleasantly surprised with what they get a chance to actually look at when reviewing this film again with the enhancements that we have now. Yeah, I would totally agree. I think every one of, on, uh, of <coughs> us on here has seen it. Is that correct? Oh, sure. I've Couple seen times. it. Yeah. A couple times, yeah. And I think that we can all agree and uh, concur with you, Mike, that we're gonna, we were pleasantly surprised when we saw it. I was. I was taken back and I actually put it on my big screen TV and I had to watch it over and over again because it was just jaw dropping. And it's going to be something that everyone I feel is going to be wanting to look at. It's, it's deserved to be looked at and, and to be um, um, analyzed, if you will, um, because it is remarkable uh, what was captured and what your dad was able to get. Um, so it, it's going to be amazing. Uh, so yeah, you guys have done a lot of these and this is something that is going to be completely different than what has ever been done with any conference before with it being streamed live. Right. And without you guys, we wouldn't be able to make this happen. So honestly, from Stu and my bottom of my heart and our heart, thank you very, very much. Um, Dr. Uh, Meldrum, tell us a little bit about what you kind of are looking forward to uh, when it comes to SquatchCon 2023. Well, sure. I, I echo everything that was uh, said previously by both Mike and, and Cliff, you know, and I was struck uh, as Cliff was making his comment about additional corroboration, oftentimes from independent investigators. I had made the acquaintance very early on uh, in my interaction with with uh, characters there in the Walla Walla area in the Blue Mountains uh, and and just recently ran into one of those individuals again his name's Kevin Lindley and he had done a lot of investigation uh, sort of uh, related to but independent of Paul and and the other players like Wes and Bill Lowry and so forth and uh, uh, we bumped into each other at a uh, conference that was held in Glide, Oregon, a little hamlet uh, a couple hours south of uh, Eugene, and um, well, if that far, just up the Willamette Valley. But in his display, he had a table to display some of uh, his artifacts and, and items right next to mine. There was this cast he showed me, and he described finding these footprints uh, way off the beaten path, you know, but in the same general location. And here was a foot that I immediately recognized, pointed out to him. He hadn't realized it himself, that it was one of our uh, familiar faces or familiar feet, I guess you'd say. This is the one that uh, uh, I guess got the greatest notoriety as uh, wrinkle foot, as it was dubbed by Dr. Krantz, who thought it was an, uh, an elderly female. That remains to be seen, but there is some evidence of some uh, injury to the foot, some possibly relating to uh, age, arthritis, and um, some uh, bunions forming and so on. But anyway, the point was, it was recognizably the same the same individual. And he had found this in a quite an interesting set of circumstances. But what really struck me was, here were, here were the recognizable features of this foot. Uh, but in the circumstances, the it had caused the, the toes to splay to a remarkable degree perhaps the, some of the greatest range of splay that I've witnessed in a Sasquatch foot. And yet, I mean, what, what struck me was no one in their right mind would concoct something like this, uh, such, such an odd looking splay of the toes, uh, extreme splay of the toes. And yet the individual anatomical features of each of those toes and their articulation with the foot was clearly evident. I mean, there was no question this was a, a very um, uh, realistic, a very credible uh, cast, a very good cast. So as, as Cliff points out, one more piece of the puzzle that, that correlates with so many others. And uh, yeah, the blues hold a special place in, in my heart, obviously, because of my initial experiences there. And 
the remarkable uh, examples of footprints that, that I uh, observed firsthand. And then, of course, having had access to so much by way of uh, materials collected by Paul and Wes and uh, Bill and, and others there uh, working within the, um, that region. So it's, it's an exciting topic, I think, to really focus attention and, as Cliff points out, give it its just dues and, uh, um, and the, uh, recognize the impact, the potential it has for impacting the uh, credibility of this whole argument. I, I traveled back and forth um, from the, on the Blues Pass multiple times, two or three times a year, going back and seeing my grandma that lived up in Kennewick, seeing my brother-in-law who lives in Hermiston. Every time that we came to the top and every time that we looked over to the right and we just saw the beautiful mountain range, every time I saw that, I said, you know what? There's got to be an abundance of elk, deer, yeah. all sorts of wildlife. And then come to find out that Mike's dad caught Sasquatch on camera was just amazing to me. And it just kind of added to the excitement, right? And just that, that I don't know, nostalgia, if you will. So I, I agree with you, Dr. Meldrum. It, it does hold a place uh, very special in my heart as well. Um, and so these casts that you're talking about, are these going to be casts that we're going to be able to see at SquatchCon? No, but what I, uh, what I probably will do in preparation I was, uh, you know, permitted to photograph them and have some very uh, good uh, photographs and all. What I thought I'd do is maybe print up some some uh, nice color photographs that can be mounted and and uh, you know be almost as good as having the cast in front of you. But uh, to to illustrate that point, uh, and when the opportunity avails itself. Yeah. Well, that'd be really good, Brian. I know we've talked about this more than two or three times on each other's podcast, but just tell us how excited you are about this. Cause I know that you are, and we've had multiple discussions about it, but what are you excited about this con compared to everybody else's? Well, very much like Cliff said, I'm very excited that it's going to be something new, right? I mean, we were just up at the Gatlinburg conference together a couple of weeks ago, Cliff and I and Renee and Matt, and it's a great experience, but this is going to be something completely different that people have never seen before. So I'm excited about that. I'm really excited that the Freeman footage is going to get its due as far as I'm concerned. Everybody talks about the Patterson-Gimlin film, which is great. But I think this is just as important, if not more important, in my opinion, as far as just a piece of the pie, the piece of the puzzle, like Cliff said, that a lot of people aren't familiar with. And I was very glad that I was able to have Michael on and talk about his book. And that sort of reignited it for me because I'd seen this film. I'd seen this this footage for ages, just like everybody else. But when Michael sent me the non interlaced version and, and the version of the film that he's talking about that most people haven't seen, I was blown away. And it sort of reignited that for me and really wanting to bring it to the forefront and shout it to the rafters to people that there is a lot out there to take a look at that people may not have seen in this way. And Cliff has said it. Cliff said it on my show. You know, the film is what it is. The footage is what it is. There's nothing out there that's on film that's going to be 100 percent conclusive, but it is the totality of the circumstances and the other evidence, like you said, that has been collected from that area by other people other than Paul Freeman. When you put all of that stuff together, it really does, in my opinion, paint a huge picture. And I'm really excited to bring it to the forefront and have everybody be able to take a look at it and to have people on the panel that can have that conversation and take questions and let people be curious about it. I think that's really what it's about is reigniting the curiosity because I've said it on my show so many times recently. I feel like we've been on the five yard line in Bigfoot research forever. And there's very few things that have really moved the ball down the field in a lot of people's opinions. And I think conversations like this and even taking a look at something from 1992 may help push that down the field and get a new generation of people talking about something and, and looking at it in a different way. So yeah, I'm really stoked about that. And I'm really excited about the, uh, Ability for people that can't be there in person to actually see it online. I think that's something that's, I, I don't know that it's ever been done. So just to be a part of that and for people to have the opportunity that would not normally get an opportunity to do that, I think is huge. And there's a ton of people out there. There's a whole gamut of people out in the UK. You and I have talked about that before. I have tons of listeners in the UK. I know people listen to Cliff and Bobo from the UK. 
and they're hungry for this kind of information and to be able to be able to access that in real time, just like the people that are going to be there in person, I think is huge. So I'm excited about it. I'm really stoked to, to be a part of it. No, absolutely. You, you guys bring up some really good points of bringing all of the evidence, right, to make a conclusion, right, to bring all of the puzzle pieces together is going to help educate everybody around. And that's what it's all about is bringing the facts to everybody's knowledge, right, bringing it up to the forefront, everybody's mind so they can actually see that, hey, these things really do exist, right? And it's going to then bring others be like, I'm really interested in this. Like I was listening to another podcast um, and it, it was talking about how this guy was reading the book at, at age 13, who all of a sudden read it, believed it and was like, oh my gosh, I want to find out more about these things. I was the same way. And what we're going to be doing at this Squatch Con is we're going to be illuminating others out there. And like what Dr. Meldrum said is finding some other people out there to take on that. Uh, w- w- what was your words exactly, Dr. Meldrum? It was taken on like that, uh, the next, uh, the, the oh, what, what's it called? But uh, yeah, it, and then it, it, they're, they're going to be illuminated. And they're going to want to go out and they're going to want to do as much as they can to find out the truth as well. The next um, so that's the next generation. There you go. So you guys are going to have your own individual booths there. What can people expect um, with your guys' individual booth? Cliff, what can people expect with your booth? Um, well, I mean, uh, w- with most conferences, and since I have the North American Bigfoot Center, um, th- this is an opportunity for me to put a little bit of merchandise in front of people. And um, what, who, if anybody purchases something from me, all the money goes to the North American Bigfoot Center. So that, that and of course, I'm available there to, you know, to talk to you and you can uh, tell me your Sasquatch stories and take a picture, whatever you feel like, you know, I'm just, I'm just there hanging out, honestly. Um, it's kind of what I do for the most part. Um, so yeah, so if you come by my table, you know, you can ask me what I've been up to recently. You can ask me any, about any new projects. Um, by the, I've got something pretty big planned for the next weekend, actually, um, which is will bear directly onto what we're talking about. So you can ask me about that project. I'll probably be speaking about it a little bit to some degree during our panel discussion. So yeah, but just you have, basically have access to a Bigfoot nerd and and you know <laughs> owns a museum. So that's exciting, Dr. Meldrum. What can they expect at your booth? Yeah, Cliff makes that sound so philanthropic. I don't have a shell a shell company, so the money goes in my pocket. <laughs> no, it goes to it does help further research and, and projects and uh, and so forth. No, I'm I'm going to have obviously examples of uh, uh, replica football for sale that uh, people are by now quite familiar with, and uh, maybe not. Maybe if it's your first time to a conference like this, I'll have copies of my books. Uh, Sasquatch Legend Me Science, which uh, even though it may seem dated to some, it still, I think, is a, a very important uh, 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 required reading for anyone uh, venturing into this topic. Um, it stands uh, apart from, from uh, a lot of the proliferating titles that are out there in a particular way. I mean, I bring a certain skill set to bear on this question um, and, uh, and all sorts of other other uh, fun things as well. I mean, this is a, a fascinating topic that has all kinds of dimensions, all sorts of layers of, of uh, interest from scientific to aesthetic to, uh, uh, you know, um, um, ethnographic and so on. Um, and as we were talking about the uh, next generation, you know, one of my uh, pet projects was the creation of a series of fun learning and activity books directed primarily for youngsters, um, those of reading age and and up, but uh, uh, they're filled with such engaging artwork. I had the good fortune of linking up with a very good artist and we really were literally and figuratively on the same page when it came to our vision of of how this uh, could be portrayed. Um, a whole series with a, a, a individual installment for each of the principal relic hominoids, at least those for whom, for which we have um, some intriguing evidence. There, there may even be more, depending on how you split hairs or, or um, uh, identify particular pieces of evidence. So, um, a great opportunity to come by and, and chat and get acquainted and and take a piece of this. Uh, fascinating mystery home with you yeah 
Uh, Mike, what about you, sir? When people get to come over and see your booth, what can they see? Uh, well, they can see me, number one. Um, <laughs> I, I plan on, you know, being there. And I guess, you know, unlike uh, Cliff as well, I don't have a museum to run. So all of my money goes to my wife. <laughs> so, you know, but uh, <laughs> that's where Smart that's going to go. No, um, I'll have some of my books there uh, so people can check that out and, and take one of those home, you know, if, if they want and get some cool signatures, you know, from some of the people that contributed to that as well, like uh, Dr. Meldrum and, and Cliff. And, um, you know, I'll have some footprint casts as well with me. And one of the interesting things to correlate back to the conversation Dr. Meldrum was having about Wrinklefoot and the cast that, you know, the pastor Kevin Lindley brought to Glide, I'll bring some other examples of that individual as well to have at the table so people can take a look at some other casts of Wrinklefoot and hopefully compare them to the pictures that Dr. Meldrum is going to be able to bring. Um, and then you can draw your own, you know, conclusions from there. But uh, I'll have some casts and I'll have some books and maybe a few other trinkets, you know, and uh, if I'm lucky enough, maybe I'll just bring a Sasquatch body with me as well. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Brian, what but, about uh, you, my friend? There's, there's still time. There's still to, time uh, to get not, one of Not those. to interrupt, but uh, I got to go back to work. So um, I'm going to have to jet off and leave you guys. But I look forward to seeing everybody there uh, in Caldwell on the 26th. And for anyone that's listening, if you haven't got your tickets, go do it. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. I really appreciate you taking the time. Right. Have a good night. See ya. See you guys. Brian, my friend, are you going to be doing a live broadcast, a live, a live podcast at all? Or are you going to be doing anything at your booth? No, I will be collecting stories and I'm going to have to pack light because I'm flying in. So I'll probably bring mm -hmm. some Sasquatch Odyssey t-shirts and maybe a couple of other things. And the main thing is just coming by and saying, hey, and I love to hear stories face to face and talk about the show, talk about what's coming up. You know, I'm writing a book. It's not done yet. It'll probably be next year before that's done, but just come by and say hello. And that's really the main thing for me. I love to go to these things because I love to connect with people in person and, and get to hang out with folks face to face. So, well, we're excited to see you face to face. We're excited to see every one of you guys. Um, truly it's been an honor already, Dr. Meldrum meeting you. And I just can't wait to meet you cliff and Mike. And, uh, it's going to be amazing. And, and Brian, I'll be there to pick you up at the airport, my friend, just get me up to date with, uh, your, your itinerary and whatnot. And we'll kind of go from there. But, Oh, with that being said, guys, I, I we got you a little over, but thank you so much um, for doing this and getting on and letting our viewers and all of our fans and everybody know what they can be looking forward to in person and online. And uh, with that, you guys have a wonderful night, and thank you so much. Thank you, thank guys. Thanks, gentlemen. Bye. Truly appreciate you joining us. You bet. It's been awesome. Thank you. So we're going to play the commercial real quick, and then you guys are out of here. So thank you so much, guys. Are you ready to uncover the mysteries of Bigfoot? Join us for SquatchCon Idaho 2023. This year, we're bringing the magic directly to your screen or join us in person. Witness the world premiere of the enhanced Paul Freeman Bigfoot footage. Doug Highcheck discovered a secret within this enhanced video you'll have to see to believe. Hear from an all-star panel of Bigfoot experts like Dr. Jeffrey Meldrum, Cliff Barockman, Brian King Sharp, and Michael Freeman. But that's not all. Get exclusive online bonuses such as Bigfoot-themed wallpapers, a Bigfoot coloring book, an interactive Bigfoot quiz, Squatch Nut Field Guide, get a copy of the Freeman Bigfoot Files eBook, and more. Whether you attend in person or watch it live online, you'll be part of an unforgettable experience. Don't miss out on this unique opportunity. Secure your spot today. Squatch Con Idaho 2023. Step into the unknown. Gives me goosebumps every time. <laughs> it looks great. Well done. Real, real glossy. Yeah. All right. Hey, great. See you later. Have a great night. Have a great rest right. of the day. Stu, how are you feeling about all that, man? I'm feeling, I'm feeling like I'm loving it, man. It's going to be, it's going to be good. It's going to be awesome. It is going to be awesome. Okay. Um, so here's something I thought of while that was going on. Well, we're still, okay. we're still on the air, right? Yep. We're still going. Okay. So, so we want to continue, what, right? Yeah, yeah we'll ahead. continue. Yeah. So go ahead. What, what are you thinking? Well, we do know, and this is for the fans watching, we do know that part of the, uh, whatever you want to call it, entertainment, 
is going to be a Bigfoot calling contest or Sasquatch calling contest. So I want to remind everybody to um, dust off their vocal cords, practice their calls and get ready. Uh, that's one aspect. We are also going to have, again, an encounter board where you have a chance to put up your experience. And of course, a map of sightings in Idaho. So just a few things I wanted to hit on to remind everybody. Yes, we have that all-star lineup of what I consider like incredible people in the Bigfoot community. But I agree. It's enhanced with some of the other things that we've come up with also. And you're not, it, it, you're going to walk away from there going, this has been the most awesome experience that I've ever had. So. No, I, I totally agree. And I think that it's going to be something for the books, like I've been saying for a very, very long time. Anybody who's going to be coming uh, to witness this and to see it in person or online, um, guys, you're in for such a treat. This has been something that we've been wanting to do for quite a while, and it's taken a lot of work. Uh, Stu's put a lot of work into this. Um, we both have worked hard Mostly at Brandon trying to get this done. <laughs> well, it's, we're a team, my friend. We're a team. I know. I'm just I'm just giving me myself a hard time. But <laughs> so. But uh, yeah, so we've got that going on. Uh, I know that we want to reiterate again, go on and get your tickets, squatchconidaho.com. You can both get the tickets of online and the live uh, in-person uh, tickets. Not to mention, we're going to be doing a VIP dinner with all of those celebrities that you just saw and heard from at Indian Creek Steakhouse at seven o'clock right after the events. And we're going to be, we're going to be having a great dinner. Um, I think it's prime rib. Oh, no, it wasn't prime rib. What was it? It was, uh, oh, it was some sort of a steak though, right? Yeah. Yeah. Something like yeah, that. Yeah. 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 Um, it was, it, uh, now I can't remember. Yeah. It, it's it, you, looking you at so many menus trying to figure out the right place. And suddenly you're like, what yeah. Is well, well, yeah. So we'll, we'll have that. It's going to be amazing. Um, you guys, uh, are also going to be very well taken care of with, um, energy and hydration because, uh, my, it's here. Is, it's here. It's here. How many people didn't believe that I was going to get it done? Hmm? Raise your hand. Yeah. That's what I thought. How many people thought all I was going to get it done? All the non-believers, all the non-believers are not on this podcast. There we go. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Well, I got it done, guys. It was actually something that I had to tweak just a little bit because what I wanted to do actually didn't happen. But I was like, I can't let everybody down, especially myself, because I've been wanting this for a while. So you are going to be able to have a chance to taste and purchase the Squatch Juice at SquatchCon. And I'm going to be able to have, I think, right around 10 to 15 containers. So once they're gone, they're gone and we can do pre-orders. But I'm telling you right now, guys, I was a little skeptical at first. Um, and then I tasted it and the flavor is pineapple mango. I'm telling you, there is no weird aftertaste. Um, it doesn't taste like vitamin. It doesn't taste like minerally. It doesn't. It has. It literally tastes like a snow cone. If anybody likes snow cones, if so you don't like you snow cones. Not, not to interrupt me, but to interrupt you. To, how, yeah. many, how much did you say is going to be at Squatch Con? Uh, about, well, I, I mean, I've, I ordered 20 containers just to see, uh, it was like a test and I've already okay. sold 10. So, because one of them, one of them, here's an idea. That's why I went Sasquatch calling contest. The winner could get something like that. Mm. Since supplies are limited. Well, so supplies are value, limited. right? The value of what we got going. Anyway. Yep. Something yep. Think about. So Yeah. Absolutely. So it is a powder. It comes in a container, 30 day supply. We'll be doing sticks. Uh, that way you can carry it in your pack. You can carry it when you're hiking oh, you're, cool. you're hunting or biking or whatever you're going to be doing. Little too um, but, but this stuff, uh, you'll see the ingredients. Um, it's, it's very, very healthy for you. Um, it's not like all of the other energy drinks out there. Um, so I, I wanted to make sure that it was not going to be like that. So, you guys can look forward to that. Squatch juice is going to be out there and it's going to be awesome. So um, we will have the splash pad out for kids. And saying that uh, we have had people reach out to us. Stu, how old do the kids have to be to be free? Under 10 free 10 and under. That's right. Yep. 
Okay, 10, 10 and under. Tier. So 10 and under. I said under 10, <laughs> 10 and under. Because there that would go. technically that would technically cancel you out if you're 10, but nine and under, but that gets too good. So 10 and under. 10 and under. We've said it's 10 and under. Yeah. So, so Stu, bring your family I, because it is a family event. Yes, you know, it and is. That's why, and that's why we're doing that. Yep. We want to make sure that you guys are well entertained, that you guys find it um, very, very fun. We understand that there is the fair going on, and it's the last weekend of the fair. And then they have the air show. Dr. De uh, M Dr. Meldrum's wife will be at the air show, um, but he will be with us. So he we understand there's Con. he'll be at Squatch Con, but <laughs> we understand how important it is. And uh, we, we just wanted to, you know, just let you guys know that we're, we're doing this and we want to make sure that it's really fun so we can do it again next year. So we, we plan on maybe doing how many next year, Stu? One really good. No. <laughs> yeah. Our tar our target is eventually, and hopefully it can happen next year is to put on three of these. Yeah. Every year in Idaho. Yep. One here, one in Eastern Idaho and one in one Coeur d'Alene. Yep. yep. One up North. So so you have to help us make this one super successful. So then when we go to start talking to vendors and potential vendors in Coeur d'Alene and Pocatello or Idaho Falls, wherever we end up on Eastern Idaho, um, that when we start talking to them, they're like, they want to sign up right away because they're going to see a crowd of enthusiasts that are ready to buy any and everything that they bring and put in a booth at uh, the Squatch Con. That's right. And then are you're going to get up there and you're going to be talking a little bit about your experiences, right? You're going to kick off the well, yeah. So, the so, what I, so yeah. So the way that it's going to happen is um, we're going to begin before we bring in our panel of distinguished experts who were just here on the podcast. Um, we are Pretty going amazing. to do what I call uh, stories around the campfire. And that is where I will share any of the, so we're still going to have the encounter board with three by five cards and you're going to be able to, let's say you saw Bigfoot in the Grand Jean area and maybe you were at the Grand Jean campground in 2005, you had your experience. You're going to write that on the three by five card and you can be as descriptive or whatever as you want, pin it up there on that board. And right before I go up there, I'm going to collect everything off that board and uh, read some of them. I'm going to try to invite people up if, if you're okay standing in front of a crowd to come up and tell your story. Um, and it's going to be based on whatever ends up on that encounter board. So that's kind of exciting stuff, right? And I think in, in 2021, when we did SquatchCon, we had like 35 people populate the board. And that doesn't count, that does not count, that does not count the kid that wrote on the three by five cards that he wished Sasquatch would come and take his brother away. <laughs> so <laughs> I did Dang not it. read that one. I did not read that Dang one. Dang it. I know. <laughs> Hey, did you see that we actually had a member of the uh, BRFO comment on the, our feed? Did you see that? Know, no, I didn't see that. I didn't see that. And he, those are the, yeah, those are the yeah. statistics we're using to show sightings in Idaho. So, yep, that's yep. Awesome. It's actually really exciting because this guy, I think, if my memory serves me right, was asking if we were going to have anybody else from the BRFO going to be att uh, uh, attending. Uh, because he had some questions and he wanted to, to talk about somebody. But did you know that we don't have anybody in Idaho who is representing the BRFO? The, Not that I know you, of. That you're aware of? No, I didn't Yeah, we don't have a member. And I guess it is by invitation only. So, Stu, I, I, I'm going to nominate you, my friend. I give it a brush up a little bit because if that guy does come, and he is with the BRFO, I'm going to put your name in the hat and say, you've got to be the nominated Idaho representative. I, I would probably have to say yes to that if it ever came to, to happen, but we'll see, <laughs> but we'll see. But, 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 <laughs> Brandon's, that would laughing, be, because, Brandon's that, laughing because he knows how hard it is for me to say yes. That's another no, idea. No, he's I gonna, mean, maybe. I mean, <laughs> he's going to be like, that's a hard yes. That's, that's going to be. Exactly. Stew. No, I, 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 I know I'm not always yes out of the gate, but I was yes for the Sasquatch calling contest right from the beginning. It's like, that's a brilliant idea. No. <laughs> yep. 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 Oh. Well, I'm going to nominate you, my friend. So it's actually going to be really fun. We're going to have the splash pad going until we have the uh, distinguished guest speak and get up there on the, uh, the stage. 
Um, other than that, bring guys, your own personal. Gonna... Yeah, hang on. Bring yeah, your bring own your personal mm-hmm. lawn chairs. It's going to be more comfortable than any chairs that are available at the in the plaza right now. Those are pretty hard chairs. And if you want to sit through everything, bring something comfy. It'll be all right. That's right. You'll be able That's to right. scooch it up closer to the stage and. We'll make that happen. So we'll we'll make it happen. We're gonna have some really great giveaways. We're still working on some. If you guys uh, are listening to this and have some really cool giveaways uh, that you guys want to donate, let us know. Reach out to us at Beyond the Footprints uh, gmail.com or you can reach us at Squatchcon Idaho at gmail.com. Um, or you can just call me. Uh, my my phone number is on the website. I don't know if that's really a good idea or not to have it there, but it is. Um, and then we would love to have any raffle items uh, donated if you wish. And then we will have some signed merch. So shirts and hats and everything like that from all of the distinguished uh, guests that you just saw on here. They will have hats just like this one. So that one was signed by Bobo, my hat here. And I have another one that was signed by Bobo that we will be raffling off as well along with some shirts from dr meldrum and 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 cliff and brian and and michael freeman will be signing those and uh we will be raffling those off as well so if you have anything else that you guys would like to donate please get a hold of us and we can make it happen anything else you want to touch base on Stu? yes we want to say good things and great things about our sponsors because without them we would not be where we are this close on the verge and a reminder that if you're watching this and you're a business owner or you just want to help out as a you know sponsor, uh, we still have room. We still have room for more vendors. Brandon doesn't think so, but I always but I always say, hey, we will find a place for him. He agrees. Always. I'm, just, I'm just saying, oh, giving him a hard time. Always. But we still have uh, <laughs> more room. Somebody we haven't had a chance to thank because we haven't had a uh, podcast where both of us were here with the right subject. Anyway, so AT&T. Why are we thanking them? What are they What are they providing, Brandon? Oh, my gosh, guys. AT&T came through. They gave us, uh, they donated five iPhone 14s for us to be able to not only have a camera on the audience at the same time that we're doing this live event, but they're also going to be individual phones for the individual celebrities that we're going to have up there. And we're going to be able to go back and forth between each person who is going to be talking about this film that they were just talking about that was taken by uh, Paul Freeman. So they donated their phones and their service so we can actually have the capability of streaming this live. So without, without them, running out of bandwidth and all of that, I mean, without that, we, oh, it would be tough, tough. Yeah, it, it, I, I don't think it could actually happen. So we would I mean, probably, honestly, we would have probably had technical difficulties trying to do it without AT&T. So. There we go. That's exactly right. I, and I'm telling you guys to this right now, AT&T has put $500 million into creating a better bandwidth, a creator, creating a better service right here in the Boise area and Idaho. I was just up in the mountains last weekend with my friends, Corey, and we were setting up chill cameras for our elk hunts. That's going to be coming up here in the next couple of weeks. Literally the week after we get done doing Squatch Con, we're going to be elk hunting. And he has Verizon, and I'm telling you right now, he could not get service in those mountains, but I could. And that's saying bad, something. Huh? Yeah, that's saying yeah. something. And by the way, when we talk about getting sponsors and, and vendors and that sort of thing and you, helping you out by exposing your logo and such, just stay with us on AT&T because we can't use their logo. They just did it out of the goodness of their heart, and yep. uh, but we can mention them. So just FYI. And then we have a new uh, somebody that I don't think we've done a shout out to yet who's one of the, who's going to have a, uh, a booth, and that is Acros. He makes yep. knives, mm-hmm. and they're, they're awesome. If you... If you're in the market for a new knife, like hunting style knife or other styles, but um, hunting season's coming up, so that's why I mentioned, wait and buy one at SquatchCon. You will be very happy. Yep, and then well worth it. Then some of our other uh, sponsors that need a shout out every time: Boise Bigfoot, um, Black's Creek Guide Gear. We got to make sure we thank them. Rack Attack, um, Snake River Fabrication. We've got Dead On Archery, we've got MJC Solutions, and 
Oh yeah, squash nut and squash juice are a major contributor. Imagine that. <laughs> Go figure, right? Exactly. And we have we have got to give a special thanks to one other person, Doug Hycheck with the Untold Radio Network. If you guys have not seen the Untold Radio Network on YouTube or their podcast, go check them out and you won't be disappointed. They have got some of the best podcasters out there. They've got some of the best content that is produced with anything that's cryptic paranormal. That's including Bigfoot. And it, it's amazing. And they've been helping us with being able to get this on a bigger broadband, if you will, so we can then broadcast it worldwide. So without them, we also couldn't make this happen. So thank you. Thanks to everybody who's following us and supporting our podcast. We truly appreciate it, too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Share it with your friends. Please um, share the link with them. Let them know about it because we're going to be bringing more people on to talk about encounters beyond the footprints on the trails out there in the will in the woods in the wilderness of Idaho and the Pacific Northwest. And we want to hear your stories. We want to hear your encounters. We want to hear what's been going on out there because without those stories, just kind of like what Cliff was saying, those pieces of the puzzle, we're not going to be able to have those pieces of puzzle puzzle to be able to create that bigger picture. So your guys' stories are going to be very, very important and crucial to helping us put things together for us to then come to a determination of saying, Hey, you know what? There are things out there that we just can't explain. And because this, 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 and this all adds up to this, this is what it could be. And this is what it is. Um, so please, if you have a story, if you'd like to come onto our podcast, um, go to, like I said, beyond the footprints at gmail.com and give us a shout out and let us know and we'll reach out and we'll get everything taken care of and set up. So, and then you can come on the show and you can let us know what you, what you've experienced because we would love to hear it. Um, and, and with that, you know, I just want to say, uh, thank you so much, Stu, for everything that you've done. SquatchCon in 2021 was awesome, but I'm going to have to say this, my friend. SquatchCon Idaho 2023 is going to be better. Okay. I believe that. <laughs> yeah. I have nothing other to say other than I believe that, or I wouldn't be participating in your, you put so much energy and so much stuff, so much of yourself into this. It'll be fine. It's well, be I awesome, appreciate man. that. You are an awesome individual. We got this going. But with that, I'm going to sign off. Sounds good, my Unless friend. You have anything so, else to add? Nope. You know the the two special sponsors for this podcast is Stu with SquatchCon Idaho, and I'm Brandon with SquatchNut.com. Have a great night, guys. Have a great evening.